in the last lecture we started i introduced myself and then a little bit more just so that we can have introduction of the instructor to start the course i told you about the two main textbooks either smith and hashimi foundations of material engineering or callister and rathwish material science and engineering and introduction uh, my lecture notes are there so any of these books that you can get from the textbook section would be good enough then i started uh, briefly talking about the course outline uh, the description uh, what are the different topics that we will be covering uh, what are the major outcomes uh, in terms of what squ wants in their graduates and what are uh, we continued with and we told you also the course outline in terms of weekly lectures and tentatively that we will mostly try to follow it but uh, there may be slight differences of course the midterm exam and the final exam will be as listed here because they are decided either by the department or by the deanship of options and registration just to explain to you very briefly about abet and abet student outcomes and the performance indicators that the department has designed by itself we told you about 1 and a and and 4 and j and so on which the course covered then we started with the main introduction chapter we gave you the example of a robot geologist which was sent to mars and so on and how material science is relevant we talked more of materials and engineering we told you of this table which is remarkable it just tells you which elements are the most common in the earth's solid crust and in the earth's atmosphere but hopefully with the 4000 years of engineering history going through iron and steel and now aluminum and then electronic materials you have a new idea of then we addressed why is the study of materials so important again gave you the example of a very modern thing which is under design and development uh seven times the speed of sound uh, passenger aircraft carrier and what will be the material science required we continued with that and we the international space station which is way out there in outer space its size and complications and technology and again why we are mentioning it because of the ultra modern development of new materials and new material technologies and new materials engineering that is required to do these type of things otherwise these ultra new technologies will not be then this was perhaps the last slide where we were saying that what is material science and what is materials engineering and uh, if you remember right we were talking of material science and we told you that science means the basic knowledge about any subject and we were talking about materials engineering and whenever we add the word engineering to something it is the applied knowledge of that so the basic science the basic knowledge of materials will be material science the applied knowledge of materials will be materials engineering and in between in between will be material science and engineering material science and engineering the thing that we are right now doing so we are not purely in the science region we are not purely in the engineering region we are in this middle region where we know some things about the basics of material science and some things about the application of material science right so i am just showing you another picture Uh, which i told you right a picture is more than a thousand words so if you see in the very center we have the basic sciences mechanics physics chemistry math and so on at the very end outside if you see is the total applied area engineering medicine and so on right so in medicine you have the whole medicine thing and then not exactly engineering but mining geological engineering and so on aerospace engineering and so forth right and here in a standard engineering you have mechanical chemical civil electrical and so on so this is the outermost layer where is the pure applied part of the world of knowledge and so on and here is the most fundamental inside crux in between in between here is where is material science and engineering so there are other 
subjects like applied sciences like life sciences earth sciences polymers they are neither there nor there they are on the boundary of the basic science and boundary of the applied so material science and engineering is the border between the two so we are just trying to explain the same things to you that you see uh, this one course is very critical because it bridges that gap between the fundamental part and the applied part and that is why i said that though traditionally the name of the course here is material science but i would have liked if it was named material science and engineering right so that is it now from here we start introduction to the world of materials until now we were trying to build up your imagination and excitation and so forth and giving you the importance of material science by various examples now the core that if we are in material science then that means we want to study materials so can we divide materials into big major chunks or categories where one type of material there are many materials inside that one type because they behave in a similar manner right so i will tell you later on uh, we will go through each one of them here if you say see we start with metallic materials or metals later on we will tell you that there is another category called polymers okay later on we will tell you there is another category called ceramics so metals polymers and ceramics are the three most well known big categories of materials automatically there will be a fourth category which we don't talk about too much which will be called non metals right you understand metals ceramics polymers and then like oxygen and nitrogen and so on which don't belong to any of these categories will be non metals so these are the four basic categories of materials and then will come some complicated like we will go to composites and we will see that composites is neither metals nor polymers nor ceramics but a mixture of these so that will be composites and then there will be some other types of material classifications based on their application like electronic materials they could be metals or ceramics or whatever but if they are applied in the field of electronics they are electronic materials there will be bio materials any type of materials whether they are metals or whatever but if they are used in biological applications then they will be bio materials right so these are the major basic categories of materials inside each of them there will be many of them we will study later on so here let us see metallic materials so again don't read further just a stop at the heading if you have to define metals right you have done so many courses from early childhood school middle school then to basic chemistry basic physics here in the university what do you think if you if i give you the that in one sentence tell your younger ones what is a metal then what would you say what is a metal right so you see this is how you challenge yourself it is very basic i i i know metals iron is a metal aluminum is a metal but yes you are giving me names of metals what is a metal if if somebody if some child asks you what is a man you say i am a man your father is a man you are a man but he said yes yes but what is a man right so the same thing that you understand it mentally what is a metal but if you have to define what is a metal what would you say right so let us go here i mean you see if you had a very clear cut one sentence definition it would be nice but if you did not let me remind you and again this is uh, a, a revision of things that you have done earlier this is nothing new okay so we are saying that metallic materials means uh, they are like iron or copper or aluminum etc we are very correct right the metallic element may combine with non metallic metals uh, elements this is right like silicon may combine with carbon carbon is non metal and a new compound is formed which is called silicon carbide or iron can combine with oxygen and find a new compound which is iron oxide 
right so this is something else this is not metals but metals can form compounds now metals are inorganic materials this is the first thing they are telling you organic and inorganic we will talk about it metals have crystalline structure they are telling us metals have good thermal conductivity and good electrical conductivity so you see in these two lines are the four basic things that metals are right so now if somebody asks you you can say that metals are inorganic materials that have crystalline structure and which are good in thermal and electrical conductivity all these four combine together in something called a metal okay so now but you see for for me when you say inorganic material inorganic what do you mean if you were in the class as i told you earlier if we are actively interacting then it would be much nicer because we are in the class and i say okay you have done chemistry in the school you have done chemistry in the university can you tell me what is an inorganic material and you would try to one answer two answer three answer and then we will go through here i am the only one i have to give the answers from your side also so what is an inorganic material you can again tell me that metals are inorganic you can tell me that ceramics are inorganic but polymers are organic but this does not define what is an organic or inorganic material so let me i don't know if you knew why is the word organic here why is the word organic here have any idea organic what is an organ yes you are right an organ is a part of a human or an animal body your heart is an organ your brain is an organ your liver is an organ right these are organs inside living organism that is why they are called living organisms because they have these major organs so this means linguistically language wise when you say organic materials then these are materials which should be found in living organisms in humans animals and plants so you see the ones that are called organic materials were initially found there but now if you say organic forget about inorganic if you say organic most of the organic materials according to you are found where yes those of you are right who say they are found in petroleum and gases right when you have crude oil or natural gases most of those are called organic materials so they are not called organic because they are coming from the earth they are called organic because originally these type of materials were found inside living organisms but this is one thing where they come from but what are organic i am again i am not saying these first two letters in remove the in i am talking of only organic what are organic materials in general yes those of you who remember your chemistry these are generally long chains of carbon and hydrogen right that is how it is and so on carbon hydrogen and so all the petrochemical things are hydrocarbons right so because these are also find, found inside human beings and animals right our proteins and so on also have carbon hydrogen uh, materials and so on therefore we call them i'll continue 